the Fine Arts Center Theater Company, a division of the Colorado Springs Fine Arts Center at Colorado College, proudly presents Of Spacious Skies, an audio play series. This week, Episode 6, Leonidas, by Jonathan Andujar. It is the turn of the 20th century, and Leonidas Frank Cheney, one of Colorado Springs' most famous sons, is about to make the big choice that would lead him to become Lon Cheney, the man of a thousand faces. Let's get this run going! Full run! No stops! I want to be home before six tonight! Come on, John! Make it happen! Okay, everybody, breaks up. Let's make it a good run. We open in a week. Places! Thank you, places! Is everyone set backstage? Lon, are we ready? Lon! Lonnie! Leonidas Frank Cheney, damn it! Somebody find Lon! Uh, yes, I- I'm here. I'm sorry, John. Sorry, everybody, I'm here. We're set, ready when you are. Uh. Let's go! Lights up! Here we go, again. Here's to another backstage adventure Placed in the shadows of a tempest teeth clencher Working the crew and I'm feeling indentured Rather be front and center, no filter, no censors I'm 18, don't wanna fit into dentures Moving props all my life at their leisure to see Lon Cheney in lights is my pleasure. Name and fame together, measure for measure. Lon, Earth to Lon. Huh? What? Yes, John, I- I'm still here. Come on, Lonnie. We haven't even made it five minutes and already we have to hold. You forgot to set the ropes the sailors use at the top of the storm. I'm sorry, it won't happen again. Here's the rope, I'm setting it now. Down stage of the cargo, like we rehearsed yesterday and the day before for the last three weeks. Got it. (laughs) We're good. Get your head in the game, Lon. Check your assignments. I've posted them backstage. Lights up! Backstage again and casting the shadows. Forgot something simple, now my ego's gone sallow. Never the knight, but always a squire. Poorly trained, failure for hire. Run, fetch, that is not a phrase I admire. I would rather change my face and retire. Then I won't feel so under the wire. All the time. I can ask John again about starting our own company. A place where crabs can come to me and I don't have to be just the pusher of somebody else's properties. Just look at John, saintly stage manager Fryer never seems to get burnt by director's hell. Fire! Fire on stage, actors evacuate, crew get the bucket. The rope caught fire. John, where is your brother? He practically put the rope on the kerosene lamp. He's done, that's it. I'm so sorry. I've had that rope set exactly the same way this whole time. You haven't been paying attention all day. John, get this kid out of here. I can talk to him. Are you kidding me? Get him out of here. Send him home, now. Okay, Lon? Get your things. I thought I had everything set. I did my props check as soon as I got in. Whenever you go backstage and you think nobody's watching, I see you. You stand there with this look on your face. So what? I can't enjoy the scene? People talk about how you watch the scenes bobbing your head up and down, talking to yourself, making weird, grotesque faces. What's that all about? I'm taking it all in. Studying. My pantomime is getting better. Upon saying this, I decided to take a moment to do a quick soft shoe and make my feet look buoyant. Then suddenly I bent forward and upon a slow rise with arms and fingers twisted back, hunched and wild eyes enlisted. I said in one breath span, I know I can be a better Caliban. Cut that out. It's not for you to criticize. The director decides who plays what character I want to act, John. I don't want to always be someone's gopher. You know we need the money. But we don't need you burning a building down. What am I supposed to do? I can't work anywhere else. You need to go home and ask yourself a very simple question. What do I want? Ask yourself that, Lon, because I'm tired of vouching for you when you don't take things seriously. Look, I'm sorry, Lon. You can't come back to the theater. What should I tell Dad? Maybe they'll hire you at the deaf and blind school. You sign well. 
Well, that's not what I had in mind. I lost my way to make a buck. Seems like I'm stuck in a bind and somehow down on my luck. Maybe because I'm unrefined in the art of theatrical muck, my stars just haven't aligned. So I've resigned, made up my mind, and sorrowfully consigned myself to the halls of anonymity. You may think he's happy and free from care. He's not, though he seems to be. Tis sad when you think of his wasted life. For youth cannot mate with age. And his beauty was sold. Or an old director's vision of a play. He's a bird in a gilded cage. So here I am walking on Pike's Peak, the boulevard that raced all of my fly dreams, taking long detours so that I may sneak aside of the gazette and let my mind scheme up a reason why my life's bleak since I lost my way to buy ice cream and tell my deaf parents not to wreak havoc with sign language or sign the scream at the son who has tried his very best to be more than average unlike the rest oh man you're here early a copy of today's gazette yes please lost my gig at the theater oh, oh, oh that's too bad you're pretty good at that Thanks. Anything interesting happen in town? Yeah, well, they're still rebuilding the businesses that got burned down last year. Well, that's gonna take a while. Yeah, nasty thing, fires. Can you imagine how awful the guy must be feeling who started it? All that property damage. <laughs> Jobs lost? <laughs> yes, we can all agree fires are bad, accidental or otherwise. Anything else happen around here? Yeah, well, there's this write-up about the flower carnival this weekend, which could be fun. What do I owe you? Oh, the usual. Unless you want to read it twice. <laughs> <laughs> Just the once. I'll catch you later. In my house, I, Frank Cheney, prepare lunch. I feel a shift of wind when the door opens. Turn round to see Lon has come home early. I put down the knife used to prep this meal. In the air between us, I ask him why his wrists now have weights attached when he signs. Brings fingertips together, then drops them. Touches hand to chest, knocks wrists together. Fingers gliding in space and time to say that he no longer works with his brother. He carries the paper for his mother like fading ink is all he has to hold. Only thing I can do is hug my son. Tell him that even burnt forests regrow. What I would like to say about my father is that it's not much of a bother to compare him to a mountain in the spacious skies that count him as captor. His candor saves your pain, his bolder hands spell out a sweet majesty above polluted strains of grace. When I walk in the house, he knows something is wrong. Towards him, I cast a throng of finger spells. He tells me, The best I can give to my family is to safeguard them against all tragedies. Use my power as protector to shield against any and all evils revealed. Sometimes as father, it's impossible to repel each and every obstacle. One thing for sure you can count that I'll do is to elevate and be there for you. He takes the news of this morning with grace I pull my hand from my chin to thank him. Well, now that you're no longer busy, go to your mother 
She loves your visits. He waves me goodbye. With my fingers, I spell I and L, then Y, and walk out of the room. As soon as I walk into her bedroom, she says to me, Lon, it's so good to see you, love, but she doesn't do it in sign. Instead, she pulls her arms out really wide as best as she can. Her joints are partially paralyzed by pain, yet with arms open, she'll grin and crease her eyebrows to say that she missed me. Being deaf from birth, she communicates non-verbally. Sometimes she points or more boldly, she'll poke me. Her face contorts when giving retorts. Either way, it's indisputable. Her force and motions will make some words unsuitable. Lon, come on over and sit down. She waves with some labor. What's the news of the springs? She touches newspaper. You know I don't want you to sign. Implied by hands on hips. I really love the way you mime. She pleads with smiles on lips. I place the paper down and stand. It's time to watch the news. I bow legs wide and spread my arms. A cowboy got confused? Wave head no, then squint face in pain. Someone was giving birth. Yes, I shake my fist up and down. I'll bet that babe had girth. I laugh next, a single L. I fan my shirt from heat. Act like there's a fire drawing close, like I'm burning my seat. I don't get it. You say you're fire? What can you mean by that? I sign. I lost my job with John. My prop's career fell flat. Oh, Lon. You'll find something again. I say with hand on cheek. I'd rather start a company and summit my own peak. She begs me speak with John again. Kinesthetic language, coupled with a couple of signs, gives much better vantage. So it went with my mother, recounting the Gazette's events. As best as I can muster, arms out, eyes wide with intensities clustered. Sometimes I stood straight with my hand on my lapel. Sometimes I was hunched when a tragedy befell. Even the gory details of gruesome crimes, the good with the bad, the helpers, and the trash. When I would be downtrodden by all of the dreadful disclosures, she would always mention how even the dregs of humanity, the misshapen beggar, are capable of sacrifice to others and have the noblest of ideals. However, they get the least press coverage, and so it went until... I signed two J's by my laugh lines to signify John's home. I motioned for Lon to leave me and talk to John alone. How was the rest of the run? Had to move a few crew members around. Look, I'm really sorry about this. We got it covered. Have you given any thought to what you want to do next? Maybe see if Grandpa or Dad could get you a job at the school. I have a better idea. You know that play we were working on? The Little Tycoon? Yeah, what about it? I've been giving it a lot of thought, and I think we can make it work as a traveling show. Oh, you think so? Is it prop-heavy? Oh, forget about that. I talked to a few of the fellows who said they will run crew if we had some cash. It's a simple design. You can manage it. Lon, Colorado Springs isn't interested. There are not enough people here to want to watch anything other than Shakespeare. John, I have it all planned out. We can start our own company. The one who couldn't remember his props has it all planned out? I'm serious. I just need you... With me, let me ask you one more thing. What's the question? Have you ever thought about traveling to Los Angeles? There you have it, the tale of how a phantom passed from one life to the next. Who first bent over, hunchbacked by the burden of an active ambition, suddenly released of his daily monotonous minutia by a poorly placed rope and kerosene lamp, and transformed into... The theatrical mud is ascending the throne, throne Turning throne. pan to mime into gold, steel still for a scene Then makes a movement to make him go whoa, 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 whoa. We'll find his legs for a roll Why I can give them to do the bandage Make you scream is his goal Make you careen is his goal Make you think he has chameleon genes is his soul Using makeup to look mean is the whole Reason he disguised his eyes with two holes The oh, master of horror who liked lean scenes No words and only look at me scenes With mean schemes Air flow to your bloodstream scenes, scenes, scenes Now that we have run across all the bases Put a scene from my life through its paces I hope that you can Connect all the traces and possibly pinpoint the birthplaces of the man of a thousand faces.